WBRZ News 2 at 6. Baton Rouge police investigate one of their own over allegations a cop sent a string of racist text messages. Good evening. Warning now, those texts are disturbing and some viewers may find them offensive. The investigative unit obtained a string of text messages from a source within the Baton Rouge Police Department. News 2's Chief Investigator Chris Nakamoto has reaction from all sides. We know the name of the officer involved, but we are not releasing it so investigators can complete their work. And there are two investigations tonight. One an internal investigation and a second criminal investigation into the incident. Once again, you may find the story disturbing. They are nothing but a bunch of monkeys. The only reason they have this job is because of the in them. State NAACP President Dr. Ernest Johnson is reading from a string of racist text messages a source says were sent from a Baton Rouge police officer's phone to another person. So the NAACP is calling for an immediate firing of this officer. I will reach out for the Baton Rouge branch president, Mike McClanahan. He and I will reach out to the mayor of this city and the chief of police, and we're going to call for a resignation and a firing today. A screen grab of the text messages seen here is at the center of two investigations by police. Tonight, the investigative unit has learned investigators are looking into the officer's cell phone records to see when the messages were allegedly sent. Sources told the News 2 investigative unit he works out of the 4th District near Southern University, an area that is predominantly African American. Johnson continued reading the texts allegedly sent by the officer to make an NAACP attorney aware of the situation. I wish someone would pull a Ferguson on them and take them out. I hate looking at those African monkeys at work, and I enjoy arresting those thugs with their sagging pants. The references in those text messages are extremely concerning to Johnson, who says all of the officer's arrests since he joined the department can now be called into question if it's determined he sent those texts. And we need to look at those individuals that were arrested that were wearing baggy pants, because we would think that based upon his comment that we probably have a few arrests sitting out there that were not justified. Either way, Johnson believes the hate-filled language in those messages has no place in today's society. We're talking about safety in the community and the enforcement of safety by peace officers that should not have this type of bias. I don't care how many civil service rules there are, this man should be fired. The Baton Rouge police officer involved is not on any kind of leave yet, according to BRPD. Late today, Chief Carl Dabity called WBRZ along with other BRPD brass and said this is an around-the-clock investigation that is complicated and could take days. We reached out to Mayor Kip Holden and he declined to comment. WBRZ News 2 at 6. Former officer Ellsbury uh, has resigned from the Baton Rouge Police Department and uh, we will be closing the investigation from this point. Less than 24 hours after an exclusive report by the investigative unit, a police officer called it quits. Good evening. Our investigation centered around racist text messages he is accused of sending. Last night, the Baton Rouge Police Department took action against Ellsbury by placing him on leave. Now, he'd been with the department for 15 years, a corporal who worked out of the 4th District. It's an area near Southern University that's predominantly African American. News 2's Chief Investigator Chris Nakamoto broke this story last night and has more on an investigation with prompt results. Chief Dabity wanted to make things clear. This behavior won't be tolerated. That's why his department immediately launched an investigation when it learned of this matter and looked into the situation closely. I was sick to my stomach. It is probably the most uh, egregious thing that I have ever read, read in my career, 29 years of being in this police department. Baton Rouge Police Chief Carl Dabity is talking about this string of racist text messages that were allegedly sent by a police officer in his department. The messages were racist against African Americans, where police officer Michael Ellsbury allegedly called them monkeys, said he enjoyed arresting thugs with saggy pants, and wished a Ferguson would happen here. And to see something like that uh, almost erase everything that we've been working for was, was gut-wrenching. Davity says all officers are required to take sensitivity training, and this is something that shows more of that needs to be done. 
It's why he's forcing all officers to take additional classes beginning next year. We have worked very diligently in this department to uh, bridge the gap in this community and in this department with race relations. Uh, and we've worked, and we're still working really Spanish hard with that. Spanish. On Wednesday, President of the State NAACP, Dr. Ernest Johnson, called for the immediate termination of Ellsbury. We're talking about safety in the community and the enforcement of safety by peace officers that should not have this type of bias. I don't care how many civil service rules there are, this man should be fired. Metro Councilwoman C. Denise Marceau weighed in on this issue. That's what's crazy. And says she knows firsthand about race issues in her district. But you've got to weed out the bad apples. Uh, I think for the most part, most officers in the Baton Rouge City Police Department are upstanding officers and do a great job. But you have that percentage that want to keep that mentality going, uh, that uh, substandard uh, for African Americans, the way they treat them. Dabity says he wasn't able to sleep last night and placed Ellsbury on leave, taking his gun car and badge. Today, he says the alleged actions of this officer are a true wake-up call. I want this police department to be a professional, respected police department, and this type of incident that's happened will not be tolerated, period. The internal investigation is closed, but Baton Rouge police are still trying to determine if a crime was committed by sending the text messages. Officer Ellsbury did not have a disciplinary history with the department, according to Davity. Davity says he plans on having a meeting with the NAACP to talk about race relations. Some of those meetings are coming up next week, and of course, we'll keep you posted. At 10. Ready for the putting this noose back around our neck. That's how serious this issue is. A man brought a noose to the Metro Council meeting when city leaders talked about a story you saw first on WBRZ. It was about a cop accused of sending racist text messages. Good evening, I'm Sylvia Weatherspoon. And I'm Michael Marsh. Following our story, that officer resigned, then was allowed to retire. We first told you about this last month. Tonight, the Metro Council wanted to know why Officer Michael Ellsbury was allowed to change his paperwork. It infuriated some. And when the council talked about the issue, people wanted to talk about what they call a larger problem, racism in the Baton Rouge Police Department. The investigative unit is following this closely, and Chief Investigator Chris Nakamoto was at tonight's Metro Council meeting where things were tense, and he has much more on what has happened since that first story. Tonight, the police chief addressed the retirement issue for the very first time. We're learning more about meetings that went on behind the scenes as citizens and elected officials grilled the police chief and other city leaders about their actions after the cop quit. If we don't look at this issue, then we could get ready for putting this noose back around our neck. That's One of the purest symbols of true hate on community. display front and center at Wednesday's contentious council meeting. It happened as members in the community demanded answers over racist text messages sent from an officer's phone. He should have been fired immediately. They sh once the evidence hit whomever up the chain of command, he should have been fired. The issue at hand is this letter we obtained that was turned into Baton Rouge Police Chief Carl Davity that reads resignation. Take a closer look. The letter the chief began passing around weeks later is the same letter but with the word resignation crossed out and the word retirement written above it. The question Wednesday night, why did that happen? Why was he allowed to change the language in the letter from resignation to retirement? Because it's been the policy of the city parish to let anybody that wanted to resign and change it back to retirement, we have done that. In so writing? I don't know if it's in writing or not. Why did you accept his letter when he changed it from resignation to retirement? In your own words. Are you wanting me to explain the whole thing, or you just wanting me to explain I that I just want part? you to explain, right, why, the same thing Donna asked. Why was it accepted, and if it didn't make any difference, why do it? It, 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 it had been done in the past. It had been done before for other officers. Although no definitive reason was given other than it has been done before, more details came out surrounding the investigation into the text messages, including a meeting held with a group of white officers immediately after the racist messages came to light. One of Ellsbury's supervisors, who is African American, wasn't part of that meeting. The meeting that you all had was the commanding officers, and were there any African Americans in that room? No, there was okay. not. All right. 
As concern grows, some now believe it is part of a much bigger problem involving race within the Baton Rouge Police Department. To allow him to come back and change a letter and not tell the public is just, um, it seems like something's going on. And, you know, usually where there's smoke, there's fire. Members from the Police Retirement Board were at tonight's meeting. They say Ellsbury could have received the benefits he paid into the system regardless of whether he resigned or retired. Some Metro Council members say it appears with a retirement, it will likely be easier for Ellsbury to get another job in law enforcement. For the investigative unit, I'm Chris Nakamoto.